many, many years ago, there was a faraway land on the other side of the world. A land richly endowed by nature. A land of golden lakes, rolling hills, fertile soil. But hovering over this once happy land like an evil cloud was the face of a ruthless enemy. Kali, chief of the plundering tribe of Kugars, who ravaged the land pillaged and burned its cities, leaving desolation and despair in their path. Across the breadth of a countryside once peaceful, the hordes of Kalin savage Tugars rode, killing, burning, ravishing, with a brutality unmatched in history. Our story begins in a quiet village in this besieged land. A village which lives in constant fear of Kalin and his invaders. God has given him the body of a warrior. But his legs are useless, and he cannot move a single step. The Togas are coming! The Togas! Ah! Ah! The Togas! Sire, I'll do anything you wish. Anything. Yeah. Swear you'll serve me. Uh, yes, sir. I will. I will. You can have anything I own. Here, see this? Huh? <laughs> Listen well, son of misery. Send this to us as a signal to Chief Cullen if the Prince's soldiers have left the city. I shall await your signal at the river in seven moons. Ah, hear me, O oh miserable one. If you fail us, if you deceive us, you shall die like a dog. Ah. This was a time of giants and dragons, when brave and fearless men rose up to perform mighty deeds against the forces of evil. Mightiest of all was Invincor, mighty defender of the righteous, who raised his magic sword across the breadth of the land to smite the enemies of the just. After many years, when Invincor had grown weary with age, his tasks were done. As ye travel far and wide, O ye wandering pilgrims, seek out a young man, stout of heart, strong of arm and brave of spirit. And when you find such a man, give him this, my magic sword, to defend our land and our people from all manner of enemies. Farewell. His last deed done, Invincor turned to stone, 
to become part of a legend that would live for all time. Patience, my son. Good morrow to thee, stranger. We are weary travelers. What is thy name? I am Ilya Moromet, son of Theodore. Could you bring us some water? Glad would I be to serve you, but I cannot move from this chair. Come into my house and drink your fill. Thank you. Come. Greetings to thee, Ilya. I know you gentle pilgrims have traveled far and wide. Tell me of the evils that have befallen our beloved country in these days of darkness. Our poor and troubled land is plunged into woe deep as the sea. Those cursed Tugars plunder, rob, and kill. If only I had my strength back, I could help defend my country in her hour of need. Drink the dew of the magic grass, Celia, and perhaps thy strength will return. Thank you, my son. Drink this, young man. Drink hearty and pray. Dost thou feel the strength returning to thy veins yet, Ilya? Yes, yes, I can. But... Ugh. I still cannot move. Patience, my Ilya. Thy strength shall indeed return. I promise thee. the magic sword of Invincer and be thou like him. Thank you, good friends, for this deed. Use it to smite our enemies wherever you may find them, Ilya Moramets. This sword shall redeem us. Its blade shall shed the blood of our foes. yearn to feel the good rich earth and the honest toil of the farmer once again. To work the fields with my father. Root up the tree stumps! Away the rocks. Uh. 
Hard as stone thou hast been, O earth of my fathers. Soft as the down of the swan wilt thou become. The mighty falcon lifts his wings and is ready to fly again. Our son is like a man reborn. With strong hands shall help work our field. Forgive me, dear mother. But I cannot till the land or reap its riches. Galeen and his plunderers aim their deadly arrows at the heart of our country at this very moment. I cannot remain here while our country suffers. Give me your blessing, dear parents. Now I must go forth. What you tell us lies heavy on my heart, my son. I go because I must, mother. My country needs me. I give you my blessing, Ilya, my son. Go in peace. Guard against evil, my son, and help your fellow man. I shall remember your wishes always, mother. You will need a strong horse. I would like to give you mine, Ilya. His name is Chestnut Gray. Do not concern yourself over his small size. Bathe him three times in dew, and he will grow until he becomes the mightiest of all the steeds you have ever known. Grow, Chestnut Gray, grow. Be thou as fleet of foot as the deer. Swim rivers faster than the salmon. Streak across the ground swifter than the wolf. Higher than the falcon winging through the sky. When a stranger calls, hear him not. But when you hear my voice, come swiftly like the wind. And we shall be friends unto death, in deed and in battle. Good chestnut gray. Serve me well, noble steed. would give me little joy. Now is no time to woo me a wife. So I shall follow the road that leads to death.
Looks like a fat owl, this one, and yet he cries rivers of tears. I shall take you to my prince, and he will decide what to do with you. Princes, nobles, and warriors, here I sit with you in judgment, and here with you do I hold court. If there be any wrongdoers, let them be brought before us for judgment. This villain must be punished, good prince. He tore my mare's tail off. You must find a suitable punishment for what he has done is a bad thing. It is bad. He has also stolen the royal timber. He must be a villain. Yes, sire. It is true that I did these things. But I had very good reason, sire. He loaned me his horse, but no harness. So I tied the wagon to the horse's tail. That is how it happened, sire. He should be sent to prison. He must be punished. This is our verdict. You, Vagarin, give him your horse to ride through the forest until her tail shall grow back again. This is our judge. Justice, Regent Prince, justice. And you, young man, remember, you must return the horse to Bulgarin in good condition. Yes, sire. I swear it. Radiant Prince, Durbar the mighty warrior has returned to the palace. Summon all the nobles for a great feast. And see that all these people are fed well. where you may eat and drink all you wish. <laughs> Alicia, will you come to the feast with me? Gladly, Alexa. You are too young to go to the feast. Oh, help me, Oh, my pretty one, be calm. I will help you. Such a delicate flower should not be bruised. Let him be heard. Perhaps he brings important news. I came here not to feast, good nobles, but to serve my prince and my country. And I say you're not fit to sit at the same table with a noble. You, a noble? More likely you joust with milkmaids behind the barn. <laughs> Greetings, radiant prince. I have collected all taxes and tributes. I was sorely wounded in battle, but I routed them all. All your enemies. For you, dear prince, for you alone, I would do it again. I would gladly lay down my life. Radiant prince, I bested the mighty Sartak. For you, I would gladly give my life. So would we all, every one of us. The wind demon attacked me and I cut him to ribbons in the enchanted He forest. lies, my prince. I know that he has not even set eyes on the wind demon. Who are you, good stranger? And where do you come from? I am Ilya Muromets. I am from Goldova. My father has a small farm there near the river. And have you yourself seen the wind demon? I will show him to you. Here he is, the evil one, not very big, but he's as mean as he looks. I've never seen such a monster. Command him to whistle as loud as he can. Can he really create the wind? 
That he can do, but do not let him frighten you. Wait, Alicia. Please do not run away. Someone will see us here. I do not care, as long as we're together. My brothers say I'm too young to be wooed, Alexei. I cannot live without you. You belong to me, Alicia. <gasps> now whistle, you ugly wind demon, but only with half of your strength. Now whistle, evil one. Mm. <gasps> of wind. This country bumpkin is quite a fellow, I think. Take this, Ilya, as a reward for your service. As for this demon, his reward will match his deed. to my own heart, Ilya. Take no offense at Alexei. He has a quick temper, but he is a brave and courageous soldier. Let us be friends. We shall be friends. Friends to the end, Ilya. Your steed beside my own. Now let us make a pledge. We shall be as brothers, the three of us. The younger brother must heed the elder, and together we shall venture forth. Together, in good and in bad, we free. All for one and one for all. This must be our way. Our country we shall defend with our lives if we must. Bravo, Ilya Muromets! Bravo, Ilya Muromets! Bravo, Ilya Put on the armor of a noble, Ilya. You have earned it. I thank you, Prince. Bad tidings, old Prince. Kalin's envoys have arrived at the city gates. with bread and salt. Those swine who laid waste our land, I would rather greet them with arms than with bread and salt, sire. Those are very bold words, Ilya. Would you teach me how to rule? First we shall hear this envoy. Then we shall decide what course to take. I come as an envoy from the mighty chief Kali. It is his will that you shall pay him taxes and tributes. For 12 years you must pay these tributes to us, else we will invade your land and empty your coffers. Eat and drink your fill. We shall pay what you ask. We shall do as you command. Garlin's envoy shall not to be bribed with bread and salt. To send such a dolt as an envoy is an insult. Does he not look like a great fat ox to you? Who dares speak thus to Colin's envoy? I would strike him down as soon as look at him. Guard your tongue or I'll cut it off. You come here with words of war. Therefore, we answer in kind. And we are prepared. Resistance is useless. I will make you bow to our mighty chief, Colin. The words of your boasting shall die in your throat, envoy of Colin. I have heard enough. Your head shall be the first I chop off. <laughs> your own sword, dog. You shall die for calling! Run, accursed dogs! Run back to your master, Colleen! 
and tell him the same fate awaits anyone he sends us. Tell him we will fight. We will pay no tribute. Come wash your hands, oh noble soldier. He is indeed a mighty warrior, as mighty as Durban, and as courageous as Alexa is. His strength exceeds that of Invincible. For your gallantry, I will forge for you a coat of armor finer than the prince's own coat of gold. Take this lance. It was fought for a mighty warrior. I thank you all, good people. I shall try to be worthy of your trust. The prince! Make way to the prince. For your service to our people. All hail Ilya Moravet! I must act quickly. I must get rid of this new hero, else I will have to answer for myself to Carlene and his terrible band of cutthroats. And that is how I lost her, my beloved Ophelia. We will find for you a bride from a great and noble house with great riches. What matter riches or even family? I loved her deeply, but the evil Tugars took her away from me and killed her. So I came here to serve you, my prince. Give me a task equal to my strength. So be it, Ilya. I shall send you far away on a mission of importance. I know you'll succeed. They're waiting anxiously for me. <laughs> Let me have her, Sartak, and you can have all my silver. Give her to me. You can have all the gold. Not so fast. You shall not have her, nor you. I will take the captive maid to Chief Kali. He is sure to give me half a kingdom for this prize beauty. <laughs> that shall never be, you plundering thieves. She will be set free to go home to her parents. Fear not, little one. They shall harm you no longer. I shall release you. Nothing on this earth, not even a Tugar, would keep you from me ever again. The Prince! I see you are quarreling again, my rich and worthy nobles. If I gave you free reign, you would tear our country apart with your fighting. Matthew Bredor. I have work for you. You must prepare a caravan of furs and copper and voyage out to sea. Принесите с поля колосочек белый, он растет в узоры, под рукой умелый. Гули, гули, гушки мои. Сар 
родися вел, а ёжик будь ты ловок, про того стараюсь, но не любый дорог. Я не зря трудилась, не жалела шелка, бережет все благо, катит слева солнца. Spinning and weaving, Belia, my love? Busy hands dispel only thoughts. It has been lonely here without you. I, too, have spent many years of loneliness, my dear wife. But that is all behind me now. I am lonely no more. In our marriage, I have found true happiness, dearest Belia. A priceless gift. But what is this? This cloth. It's woven of gold. It glitters. It is not a cloth. It is a magic tablecloth. It is beautiful indeed. For whom did you make it? For the one whom I love the best. Now you must rest from your labors, my busy little wife. All these wonders. The earth offers it all for us to glory in. My sweet one, grieve not. We do not part for long. I shall drive Carleen and his wicked Tugars from the gates of our city once and for all, and rid our land of those traitors who would be trained. In this most bitter hour of our parting, tell me, dearest one, tell me truly of your greatest wish. Bear me a son, Vilja brave son, to grow up strong and be a great warrior. The falcons in the sky, they were witness to our love, little Vilja. If you should bear a son, call him little falcon. Then whenever I see a falcon, I shall think of my son. It is my greatest wish to give you the son you desire, my beloved. If you bear a son, Give him this ring. It was given to me by our prince. Once again, Vilja was to be separated from her love. Ilya, fearing another attack by the two guards, insisted that his wife accompany the prince's caravan of furs and copper. On the open sea, he reasoned, Vilya would be safe from harm.
Cordova. What is wrong? Uh, punish me not, O Prince. Please let me speak first. Speak then. We were attacked by a band of Tugars. They plundered the caravan, took everything. I escaped after spending months in bondage. Ilya Mura Metz, huh? Why was he not there to help? Did I not tell you, Radiant Prince? He is a fool. He is not the sort of man to be trusted, sire. He should have been there to help Matthew. For this, I will banish him from the court for three full years. If you banish Ilya, you exile our strength. Fond as I am of Ilya, this must be done. He goes to the dungeon to pay for his deed. Greetings to you, good soldiers. I see you serve our city well. There is little joy in our service today, I fear, Ilya. Blame us not, Ilya. The prince has given orders. You're not to enter. You jest, do you not? I have ridden here in great haste to help rid the palace of its traitors. Do not let him in the palace. The prince's orders. This is your work, O captor of the wind demon, so brave and fearless in battle, huh? Ilya has told me the true story of your treachery and deceit, traitorous villain. Ilya, you're not wanted here anymore. You have been banished. So you all conspire against me, do you, my nobles? You shall soon see how I deal with conspirators. I think he should be hanged as soon as possible. I think he should be drawn and quartered. Let the prince decide what to do with him. If the prince wants no more of me, then I want no more of his gifts, you may tell him. As I drag this coat in the snow by its dangling sleeve, so I shall drag those traitors to have plotted against me. You nobles are ready enough to join in a feast. What about the Tugars, huh? Who among you is ready to stand up and fight when the Tugars come? They are brave men, they are when the two guards are far away. I will drive every traitor from the palace, I swear it! You act too hastily, brother warrior. The prince is quick of temper, but he cools quickly, too. He has sent me to fetch you. Come to the palace with me. Uh, my honor is at stake. I'll not rest till I've exposed these scoundrels. Don't do that, go. Hey, Hey, don't go with us! Have you forgotten the pledge we took, Ilya Moramitz? The younger brother shall heed the older? That was our pledge, Ilya. The prince is wise and knows whom to send here. No one could persuade me to go but you, Durbar. Come, let us go to the palace now. Why did you draw your bow in anger beneath my window? To avenge the wrong you did in accusing me unjustly, sire. The arrow did not leave his bow. He has evil thoughts of you, O oh prince. I saw him trample your coat on the ground thusly, and threatened to do the same to you, sire. Yes, I heard him threaten to do that in a moment. Yes, he did, it is they true. lie, all of them. True, I spoke in anger. But I did not threaten you, my prince. He is not to be trusted, sire. He will start the entire court into mutiny, sire. Listen, already they are rebellious. It is not in the streets the treachery is planned, oh, my prince. It is right here, in the palace, that it is hidden. Your words are empty, Ilya. They are untrue. What shall we do with this traitor? Away with him to the dungeon. Feed him bread and water. Perhaps there he will learn humility and wisdom. Prince Vanda, I thank you for inviting me to feast with you. And you too, Durbar, for persuading me to come. I always believed you to be on the side of justice, my prince. Let Ilya go free. He boasted that he would rule our country. The deed is done now. Lead him away. Come, man! Take him to the dungeon! Had I so willed, I could have crumbled your palace into bits, but I had no wish to spoil its decorations. The hour will come, Prince Vanda, when you will bow to me. Oh. Lead me away, lackeys and schemers. 
I am weary of this talk. It is not Ilya Moramich you have wronged, but our country herself. You have taken the sword from her hand. He speaks the truth. We swear never to set foot in the palace. You banished us as well. you have done is most unwise, my dear. Let him go free. Send him away to a village. He has performed many services for our country, dear. Feed him well, mind you. Look after him. He will repent. That country bumpkin thinks himself higher than the prince. He is much too proud. He will never repent. Feed him well, I tell you. Feed him well, I command it. Tells me. That I have not done, nor will I. He must have died of hunger long ago. Seven moons have passed. I must send the signal to Sartak. Now, Swift River, you must help. Carry my message to the two guards who wait this promised signal, which will be the sign to attack. What are you doing up there, eh? Oh, oh, heaven help me. There was someone down there. Help! Help! Oh, oh, oh. I'm caught. Help! Help! Oh, man. Ah, this is strange. I set a trap for a fox. I'd catch a pair of breeches instead. This key looks familiar. I have seen it before. Ah, this looks like trickery. That devil is a sly one. But I can play tricks too. Now float, wherever you like. Where the tide takes you. Beyond the seven sea. Joyous news, O oh, exalted one. Some passing merchants have told me of the prince. He has thrown more of it into a prison, but all the nobles are deserting for a home and refusing to fight. <laughs> you bring good news. I'll destroy the infidels who dare defy me. Saddle the horses! The signal, we have just found it! In the river! He kept his word, that sly one. This was the signal we arranged. Once again, Khalid, I served you well. Let me see what you have. By Beelzebub, a pair of breeches! What does it signify to you? They are ready to surrender to Kali. You see, these breaches are a symbol of the unconquerable might of Kali. Two trumpets, as it were, each ready to herald the power and the glory that is Kali. I see two roads here, and both of them will lead Kali to victory. Yes, victory shall be ours finally. Ah, the attack must be timed according to the star. You are correct. It is not yet time to attack until the gods of battle tell us. 
We will bide our time. Unsaddle all the horses. And while Colleen waited for a favorable sign, Ilya Muromets rotted in a dark dungeon, unaware that his wife had borne the son he so fervently wanted. And so the months slipped by. You are still only a baby, and already stronger than an oak. Grow, my son, grow tall and strong, and be like your father, with courage like his and his strength as well. Little Falcon, my son, this is your present from him. Run along and play, little. Why do you not love me? Why do you run away? How many times must I tell you? I wish to keep you for my own. Never. I despise you. You shall never touch me, Colleen. I swear it on my life. What manner of man are you to force me? Kings grovel at my feet, and so will you, my dear. I would sooner you threw me into a cage of wild animals. You will never have me. <laughs> I will kill you! Ah, the little wolf cub. He fights, eh? <laughs> yeah. I shall teach you how to fight. And your enemy shall be the cursed prince. little falcon and already you have the strength of a warrior you shall challenge our champion to a jousting bout <laughs> show us little falcon whom i call my son how skillfully you wield a lance i know i shall be proud of you <laughs> with this weakling. Let him guard the captives. <laughs> well done, little falcon. You have earned the cap of champion to wear as your own. The time has come to take up our arms. We move.
your princess captive for the pleasure of our chief. Give this reply to Carlin. What you have demanded, we will pay you in three days from now. You must bring your tribute to Carlin's camp at the river. Well, which of your nobles will you send to fight them? Here they are, choose one. He spoke truly, Ilya Morometz, when he said there would be many to feast with you, but none to stand up for our land. He spoke wisely. Oh, if only Ilya were with us, this Kalin would not keep us in terror. I shall go to him and ask his forgiveness. Prince! Radiant Prince! He may be dead. He has refused food and drink. Why have you kept this from me? Open the dungeon. You'll pay for this. Wait here, Radiant Prince. I must run and fetch the key. I do not have it with me. Is this not the key? I believe this is the key to the dungeon, sire. Lead us. Scoundrel, you starved him to death, son of misery. Look, he's alive, alive. He lives, he is alive. I fed him, Prince, as you commanded. He lies, my Prince. He is the traitor who has plotted against you. It was this that I came to tell you, but I was thrown into this dark dungeon instead. That is not so. He would have died in this dungeon without my bread and water. It was my Velia who saved my life. Come, I will show you what she did. A miracle. Truly a miracle. Forgive me, Ilya. I have wronged you. Help us, Ilya, against Kali. You wish my help, Prince? Ilya, we need you. Grave danger threatens. The Tugas stand at our gates. Vast numbers of them. Help us, Ilya. Forget your grievance, Ilya. For the people's sake. Not for your sake, my Prince Vanda, nor for the sake of your princess. But for the beloved land which gave me birth and which I love, for her will I give my strength. For you, Ilya Muramets, my golden suit of armor. And for that traitor, the boiling tar. Oh, 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 spare me. Tell me, Ilya, tell me, what do you think we should do first? There is one thing we must do without a moment's delay. You must summon all of your fighting men to your side to plan the battle at once. Within three days, I will assemble every warrior in the land. Kalin's men were restless for plunder and would not wait. And beyond the palace, on another plain outside the city, they attacked. Greatly outnumbered, the bold defenders fought back bravely and won the day. But what of tomorrow?
This indeed was a costly battle, but we had to keep the foe in check. Though the prince has wronged us sorely, still we have fought against the enemy who threatens him. And now we must help him further, Alexei. Not even if the path be strewn with golden coins. I will not fight for him again. We must forget our feelings. The prince stands in his greatest danger, and he needs us. Would you lead me to the prince as once you led Ilya? For the nobles to jeer at? Do you think I do not feel about Ilya as you do, grieving over the fate that has befallen him? Why do you quarrel so? Has the world grown too narrow for both of you? You must hasten to William Moramets. He is alive. I have heard that he lives. He lives? Yes, he is safe and well. This is indeed wondrous. The three days have already passed. Soon the two guards will strike again. And still no sign of our men. I myself shall go to Carleen and persuade him to grant us three days more. Spare neither gold nor silver. Fill new sacks to the brim and load them on gilded carts. Hearken to these words from a simple farmer, my prince. We will use torn sacks and load them on old carts take but a small portion of your treasures. I have thought out a plan. You ride slowly and drop a jewel on the ground every 10 paces. And you drop a silver coin at every 100 paces. And you at every 1,000 paces a golden coin. <laughs> Prince Vanda has great riches. I want them. I will expect each of you my warriors to bring home much gold from his palace. It shall all be ours. All of it ours. <laughs> ah! Ah! Mighty Chief Carlin, Prince Vanda has sent us here with gifts and bounty as you have commanded. <laughs> so the prince has submitted. He is wise, your prince. Yes, Kali. Here is all the treasure. In the first cart, silver. And this one is filled with coins of gold. And the one beside it is loaded with jewels. They're all for you. Unload the cart and pour the gold into my sacks. This is indeed unfortunate. You see, it is quite simple. As we prepared to leave the palace walls, the prince was in great sorrow, as you can understand. His riches he loaded on broken carts, and his gold he poured into these torn sacks. It must all have spilled on the way here. And only these few pieces of gold are left. Will your men go back for it, or shall I send mine? I fear if I send mine, you may not get it all. My warriors, listen to me. Search every road with care. I want all that treasure brought back here. Go to the gates of the city. I'll have that gold. If there is no treasure, beware then of my sword. You will pay. Death will be swift for you. Do not rage. Send out as many men as you can, and by nightfall they will return with full pockets.
chief, and have found no gold. Put him to his death like a dog. Do not act in anger, Colleen. There is no need to be hasty about killing me. First, you must take the treasures that are yours. <laughs> Whosoever steals from me will die by my own sword, like the dog that he is. Come forward, chief warriors. Gather every coin and treasure. Pile it all at my feet. It is better to give up the gold than lose our heads. Empty your pockets, sir. The print shall repay us a thousandfold. Yes, yes. Pile all the treasure at my feet. Every piece. Every coin. Enough. I still lack one thing to make me content. Bring to me Ilya Moramad. That is what I'd like. <laughs> then shall I retreat from your gaze. So shall it be, mighty Colleen. Return to the palace. Go to the dungeon and seek out Ilya Muromet. And bring him back here with you to this very place. Hurry. And tell the prince not to dally. There is not a moment to lose. Tell him that. Do you understand? Almighty Chief Kalim, we have searched along every road. They are not bringing Ilya Moramets. You have deceived me, emissary. And you shall die. I am willing to stake my own life on it. Ilya Moramets will appear before you. If I had Ilya Moramets before me, I would retreat and withdraw my men. Here I stand! Ilya Muromet! Now withdraw your men. You are bound by the promise you have made to retreat. You think perhaps I am a fool. I should chop off your head. But for the courage you have shown, I might pardon you. I shall command and you follow. My clever emissary. You shall be one of us. Never shall I serve a tyrant or betray my native land. We shall fight you to the end until we have regained our freedom. Take your men and retreat at once, tyrant. We shall destroy you, each and every one of you. Ah, tie him up. I wish him to be burned alive. Drag him here to me. I shall pull his arms. Out of his sockets! Drag him here! With these hands, bloody tyrant, I shall crush the breath from your monstrous body! <laughs> to join you and your men in the attack on Prince Vanda. Ah, well then, you, you must go alone against them and in single combat. who shouts so loudly. I am ready to beat you in single combat. You are too old and feeble. You are no match for me. Go home, old man. You must first kill a falcon, young man, before you bind him. 
You are afraid to fight. Eh? Now I shall show you no mercy, old one. <laughs> Young braggart, ah! your strength is great. <laughs> Hold, my brave young warrior. I had not thought we would ever meet on the field of battle. Why did you not kill me? When you could, old man. I would have shown you no mercy were I in your place. Be not so fiery, my wild, unbroken colt. Tell me your name, young man, and what do they call you? Who are your father and mother? I have no mother. I have never seen her. I am little Falcon, the son of Colleen. What you say is not true. I am your father. Do you speak the truth, old man? Is this really the truth? Yes, I speak the truth. Look now, I will show you. See, this is my ring you are wearing. It is as though in a vision, I see my mother. Oh, father. Will you ever forgive me for what I have done? And now, I wish to fight with all my power for the Prince and you. No, my son. I have a plan. First, you must go back and find your mother, boy. You will know her by the scar on her right cheek from the sword of one of Colleen's Tugars. We must pretend to fight. They are watching us. Strike me, father, with all your strength. Kill them all! Massacre every one of them! Old and young, women and children, spare no one! You will take the left flank, Alexei. And Durbar's men will follow along the right flank. And I will lead my men through the center of their ranks. The prince remains here with his men to defend the palace. Um... favor. Take the hat. 
Not even in your dreams, Falcon, will you ever wear the hat of the champion. <laughs> Give me the keys. There. Fear me not, good people, fear me not. You are free to return to your homes, to your loved ones. Go now, and those of you who have strength, fight against Colleen. Do not be afraid. I am looking for someone. Who among you knows my mother? I know she is somewhere in this dungeon. She has a small scar on her right cheek. It is the remembrance of a Tugar sword. Mother, forgive me. Mother. Do not send me away. Please forgive me. Please. I have found my true father. He sends you his love. My boy. My boy. Falcon, you must go back and help them now. No, I will not leave you here alone. No harm shall come to me. I will find my way home safely, my son. There's breeds fire, but we'll extinguish him. Look, he flies like a nightingale. Look, the spear has hit him. Thank you. 
When we are the victors, Mortimer die. He shall be burned alive. <laughs> become a noble or a prince. I thank you, my prince, but I could not live at the palace. I must pursue my destiny. I must go where adventure leads me. The road to life has many different paths. This brave and willing soldier, he will serve you well at court. He is my son. So be it. We shall be proud to have with us the son of Ilya Murray. Bring no dishonor on the magic sword of Invincer. I accept this sword, and I shall honor it always, Father. Bravo, Ilya Moromet! Bravo! 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 